Hey guys, welcome back to another action figure review. We're checking out another Spawn Series 5 figure from McFarlane Toys, a recently introduced character, Sin. On the back of the box, we have comic book art of Sin from the alternate cover of issue 332 with no other information about the figure or accessories. And on the side, we have the same art zoomed in with the Spawn logo on it. Like most McFarlane releases, the figures can easily be removed from the box without having to tear anything open. But in order to get the standout, you will have to cut it out of the plastic holding it in place. Sin is a new character introduced in the latest Spawn comics, formerly the major character Cogliostro who originally appeared as one of the homeless who mentored Spawn in the early Spawn comics. Cogliostro himself used to be a Hellspawn and was able to escape the cursed deal he made with Malboja after realizing that using up all of his powers would send him back to Hell. Conserving the last bit of power he had, Cogliostro was able to live for centuries and now lives to warn other Hellspawns of their fate if they use up all of their power. After Malboja's defeat by Spawn, Cogliostro would then betray Spawn, revealing himself to be Cain, the original first murderer from the biblical times, wanting to control Hell for himself. After many failed attempts for more power, Cogliostro would then sacrifice himself to a power known as the Darkness and start the process of becoming reborn into Sin. Sin now roams the Earth, tracking down Hellspawn and killing them to replenish his own Hellspawn power, gaining enough power to try and force Spawn into opening the Dead Zones, portals that both Demon and Angels use to teleport in and out of Earth. With all of the Dead Zones closed, Sin is unable to return to Hell to claim the throne for himself. Let's check out the details of the figure. Sin's rebirth has made him young again, only bald, and he still keeps his aged white colored beard only trimmed into a goatee. The dark brown skin is even darker under his eyes, giving him a tired, stressed out look. His face is sculpted in an angered expression, with his eyebrows pointing downward and his mouth in an open, snarled expression showing off his teeth. On the back, we can see a large plate of green armor surrounding his neck in an armored collar, detailed with small circles dotted all around. The armored powered suit comes in many panels of armor, completely covering the chest detailed with more green circles, some of them lit up with green paint. There's a very light dry brushing of silver, giving the armor just a little bit of battle damage effect on the edges of the green armor. Since Sin powers his suit using Hellspawn power, the small lit up green dots also light up in UV light. A large brown tattered cape hangs from the back of the armor, wrinkled and detailed with a cracked leathery effect. Large folds and small rips in the sculpting make the cape look battered. The cape reaches all the way down to the floor. Large holes exposing the stitching and even larger tears can be seen towards the bottom. It's also sculpted in a windswept effect, with the cape blown to the side. Underneath the green armor, the biceps and shoulder are completely covered in layers of reflected metal stacked over each other, with more of those small circles at the edge of each plate. More green plates cover the elbows and forearms of the figure, both colored green with the arm guards detailed with more small dots and panels. Both hands are covered in a bright silver metal in an open claw-like position. The gloves are textured in a similar way to the undersuit, small sections of armor layered over each other. More green plates of armor cover the waist, with two large silver chains attached to them hanging downward. A bit of silver dry brushing is seen here again, with just a minimal amount applied. Underneath, we have a torn brown skirt covering the thighs. And just like the chest armor, the green circles here also light up under UV light. On the left side of the belt, the brown cloth drapes over the thigh with more large holes, tears, and wrinkles in the sculpting. Resting on top, we can see the thick silver chain links hanging down and back up attaching to the back of the belt. The skirt has been completely torn off on the right side of the belt, exposing the plated thigh armor underneath with only that large silver chain hanging here. Lifting up the cape, we can see the back of the belt with just a simple layer of armor stacked on top of each other with those large chains attaching to them. Similar to the armor on the bicep, we have the thighs of the figure wrapped in more steel plates of metal, non-glowing silver circles, and that rigid armored effect down the center of the leg. Over on the legs, the same design was used here on the thighs, with the only difference being the size of the limbs themselves. We wrap up the details of the figure with his boots. In a dark steel color, the boots have large triangle shaped sections of armor pointed upward, with the rest of the shoe in two large layers of metal. Let's check out the articulation. We have a ball joint at the head, with some great range looking upwards and downward. While we do have the standard McFarlane joints that allow the shoulders to bend in and out, open and rotate, 
Due to the bulkiness of the armor, you won't be able to bend the arms upward. Even though it's made of a soft plastic, it's just too thick to push out of the way. The biceps do rotate. And we have double jointed elbows with a decent amount of tightness. The wrist can bend up and down and rotate. Once again, we have the ball joint at the chest normally seen on McFarlane figures, but due to the bulky nature of the armor, we get minimal articulation out of the area. It's hard to bend forward or rotate the chest, but you have a slight range here. The ball joint at the waist rotates and bends forward and back much more freely, with the combined joints having decent backwards range and minimal forward crunching. For the thighs, on the right side we can open the legs and some decent forward range with the backwards being blocked by the cape. Unfortunately, on the left leg, the thigh is completely covered by the skirt, limiting range almost entirely. There's no cut here to enable more range. The knees are double jointed and bend backwards. And we have ankles that rotate. They bend up and down and twist. And we have a toe that bends upward. At the standard McFarlane scale, Sin stands about 7 inches tall, just as tall as many of the other Spawn figures out in the series. With other McFarlane scaled figures, Sin stands just as tall as the rest of them, normalized to the 7 inch scale. Next to Hasbro 6 inch scale figures, McFarlane's massive size dominates the scale, making the standard 6 inch look small. And on the larger side of the 6 inch scale figures, we have some mythic legions that end up just coming up a bit short when paired up next to Sin, but nothing's too out of scale. For the accessories, we get a few light blue energy effects, starting off with an energy claw. We have an energy sword effect with small lightning bolts sticking out of the back. Both of the energy weapons have no pegs or grips, but can be attached by simply clipping them into the hands. We have a special small base with flames of blue energy reaching upwards and a peg to socket in the foot. You can easily socket the foot to the peg on the stand, adding some additional support to the figure. And like all other McFarlane releases, we get the standard black stand with the Spawn logo on it. While Sin's backstory is of a character that has been in the comics since the start, Sin's rebirth gives us an entirely new design for the character with an increased appearance in the current comic series. Unlike the recent releases of McFarlane figures, Sin's figure design is very accurate to the comic, with his appearance matching many of the comic's designs. Although I do have to wonder if his new design was aimed towards having a much more displayable figure, as I don't see many collectors buying a Cogliostro figure as a frail old man. Sin is also taking a major role in the comic as well, being pushed as the biggest threat to Spawn and taking the lead as the current number one villain in the storyline. While Sin isn't the most colorful figure in the Spawn toy line, the use of metallic colored plastic for the Under Armour looks really good. The glossy metal effect really stands out from that matte green on the armor. And while the paint is minimal, the face is detailed very well, and the slight dry brushing of silver shows some promise in bringing out the detail in the armor. It's a shame so little was used. The green dots on the armor glowing in UV light is one of my favorite hidden details of the Spawn figures, and it makes sense with the armor being powered by Hal Spawn magic. The clear energy effects is always a great accessory to have, letting you have a lot of poses displayed with them, and it's a must have to show off this character's powers, as he is new and unfamiliar fans will see at a glance what he's capable of. The only thing I would want more out of this figure would be an additional pair of hands to hold weapons with, but at the price I pre-ordered the figure at, $20 went a long way on Sin. Sin is a figure that I think a lot of people will pass on, Mostly because you aren't caught up to the recent events in Spawn, you just wouldn't know who this guy was. It's a shame that the back of the boxes don't have any info on the characters. Just a small bit of lore would go a long way for collectors who aren't invested in the comic currently. Personally, for me, I was not caught up with the comic and I only pre-ordered him to have him as a stand-in psyker for my McFarlane Warhammer collection. But after reading the story, I think Sin has a well-deserved spot in my Spawn collection. Other than the limited articulation due to the bulky armor, Sin is a great figure to have. He comes with some great effects that can be used on pretty much any other figure, and makes a great base for a custom figure, and is taking a much larger role in the Spawn story. Definitely worth picking up. It's overall a solid figure, where the lack of paint doesn't really affect the overall design, 
For the hardcore fans out there, you'll definitely know Sin is a figure to get, and for the casual fans, he's a solid villain in a power suit that will look great in your display. Alright guys, that's it for this review. Leave a comment letting me know how you like this figure, subscribe, or give me a like to help out the channel.